man, I really don't give a shit where these properties are. Like, you know, as long as we can cop them and there's a market there, there's cash buyers, we could find people. Like, why would we geographically limit ourselves to yeah. just, you know, one market? Mic check. I'm good. Mic check. Mic check. You can read about success all day long, but if you don't put in the work, the mindset, execution, and the hustle behind your vision, it just remains a dream. When everything goes wrong, you have to take all the responsibility. We uncover what high-level entrepreneurs, business owners do to rise up from hustling daily. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances. The world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. Join me as I share with you actionable tips to help you grow your business, learn skills, and help you level up in your self-development journey. Your number one spot for business and personal growth is the Online Hustlers Podcast with your host, Esteban Andrade. Every day I'm hustling. Here we have Nick Perry. And uh, Nick Perry, uh, nice. I mean, it's so nice having you, man. Uh, we both are Nicks, by the way. That's kind of like something we have relatable makes us cool <laughs> and uh right now nick is it's located it's situated in his space of his company in austin correct yeah uh, nick austin, Harris, awesome and nick runs a, a wholesale operation in uh all us uh, approximately is 30 plus markets correct 30 plus states i do the united states of america so all you have <laughs> many markets you want it's one market i guess you could you call it the whole country there you go. So now for him, now he call it one market. <laughs> that's how like how that's how dominant right now he has it uh, in in his business model. And his business model consists of leveraging other markets that are probably lower cost per deal and doing really good deals there. You know, getting the juice out of those other markets that are probably untapped waters for a lot of people. And Nick is is currently doing that. So, but I don't want to talk about it. I, I want Nick to talk about it. But first, uh, Nick, let, just tell us a little bit of a story of you because we were going to really go deep into like how you're wholesaling houses all over USA. You're leveraging uh, your time. You're, you already have your time delegated. You have a team of people that are both local and off of uh, of VAs that are off offshore correct and at the same time you are leveraging a lot of inbound lead generation uh because i see you everywhere you're like omnipresent my man just to let you know uh it's your company is 2020 there you're you go omnipresent it's what are you doing exactly my man <laughs> so uh that is what we're going to be talking about so nick tell us tell us a little bit of uh, about 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 how you started where were you before doing all of this and uh yeah a little bit about yourself yeah um grew up in northern virginia right outside of washington dc um barely made it through high school um i think my you know parents basically begged my teachers to you know pass me through yeah i went to alternative schools got in a lot of trouble you know coming up in you know uh started getting in a lot of trouble in middle school you know, high school, basically stopped going to school or in like the ninth grade and, uh, you know, got myself a job. So my first job, you know, I was working at the grocery store and then, you know, started working at cell phone stores. So my whole focus, you know, when I was, uh, you know, an adolescent, you know, growing up was like, I need to make money. I've always had kind of that drive to, you know, have some money in my pocket, be able to go out and do things. And I never really did too well with like, you know, structured, authoritative, like, uh, you know, places like school. So I, you know, put most of my attention into, you know, going to work every day. I remember I was 16 years old and the cell phone store that I was working at, um, you had to be 18 to work there, but I lied and told them I was, you know, 18, I was 16 and I did a really good job there. So they promoted me to uh, store manager, but store manager required you be there full time. So uh, that was the end of my formal school career right there i said you know what i'm not going back to school so i stopped going to school when i was in 16 i figured out a way to do the rest of my high school online so i blitzed through my junior and senior year you know within like 10 weeks and uh they still let me walk the stage a year and a half later at my high school graduation uh, i didn't really have a big you know plan as to what i was going to do career long term so 
Um, I was working out a lot at the time, decided to go be a personal trainer. I did that for five years until I was about 23 years old. I loved it, but there's kind of a ceiling. You know, I was never going to, you know, make the kind of money that I wanted to make. I would train my clients who were all, you know, wealthy clients. And I'm like, damn, I need to be the one rolling up and getting personal trained and, you know, Bentley, like, what, what am I doing? Like, I, there's something not right here. One of my clients uh, took me on. He's like, you'd be really good at sales. So uh, he uh, hired me on. He owned a chain of frozen yogurt uh, stores all over the country. And so he brought me on to basically uh, be their new store developer. So say if you were open up a uh, you know frozen yogurt franchise, I'd be the one to sell it to you. Uh, make sure that your store got open properly. Uh, help you with the operations, and then I was on to the next one. So I traveled the country quite a bit, and uh, you know, landed in Austin, Texas, one time, fell in love with it. Um, and uh, being in Northern Virginia, there's not a lot, lot to do, you know, unless you're being, you know, like a government contractor or something like that. So uh, frozen yogurt was kind of a fad. It started, you know, dwindling off back in you know 2014, and so um, it was like. Hey, I can either go work with my dad, like at the CIA, or um, I can, you know, find some other, you know, government contracting job or, you know, go take a chance and like get out of my comfort zone, get out of my home city. And so that's what I did. I didn't have any money. I put uh, pretty much everything in the back of my beater Mazda 3, drove to Austin, Texas to, uh, you know, a cheap one bedroom apartment in the hood. Didn't know anybody, didn't have any friends, no connections no plan as to what I was going to do next, but I knew that I wanted something more for my life and um, I wanted to be my own boss. So I started doing heavy research into different businesses, landed on wholesaling. It made sense to me. Um, so I went deep on it, basically, you know, put myself through YouTube university and took a lot of action. It took me you know, quite a while to get my first deal. It took me 11 months to get my first deal. Um, and this is like, you know, actually giving it my best working full time. And uh, I stayed with it. I didn't give up. And uh, I had a, I had to get a job to keep income coming in. So I worked at Indeed.com during the day as a senior account executive. Um, and I did really well there. President's Club, Top Gun, the whole nine. I was making a little over $200,000 a year. And I would, you know, my whole goal was like, I want to crush it at Indeed so I do not have to go answer to a fucking boss the rest of my life. Like, I'm not going to have another grown man telling me what to do. That's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so I took all my commission money um, and just poured it into my real estate investing. And basically, you know, I had my nine to five and then I had my six to two, which means 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., you know, every single day doing real estate investing and every day on the weekend. And I just kept banging and banging until I was able to uh, get enough deals and I was making more money in real estate investing. I got the hell out of my corporate job. Yeah. Kind of, the rest is history. You know, I've been, been at it, you know, uh, full time now since early 2017. So a little over three years now. Awesome. Awesome, man. So like, just, just to guys let you know, uh, there's a lot of skills here that like, he probably didn't go to college or like, you know, he probably didn't do like that traditional education that a lot of people do, but there is skills that are resiliency, determination, that really that drive, that, that grind that you require in order to succeed. Uh, that's what really makes you unique and can take you anywhere. Like you can literally pr push through many things. And he was a, he was a guy that really went and did some odd jobs, probably random jobs, but you know, try to make that money because he had the vision. He started the vision with real estate because you started seeing real estate as a really, uh, really good thing that you wanted to do for, for your life to create wealth. I'm guessing, right? That's something. Create wealth, which is ultimately one of the uh, uh, one of the goals here with real estate. A lot of people get in there to create wealth, and you know that also passive income. If you get if you get to get uh, a lot of rentals and stuff like that. But at the same time, there is opportunities on making money almost, I don't want to say instant because it's not, not, it's not a get rich, get quick rich scheme, but with wholesaling and all of this, you can literally get a lot of profit uh, in, in relatively a, a short amount of time. 
So how old were you when you actually uh, went ahead and, and fu went full dips into real estate investing as we know it right now, uh, wholesaling and, uh, you know, stop to or whatever it is that you currently do it. Like how old were you when you went full dips? I was uh, 25. You were 25. Awesome. Yeah. So that means that, man, you're like 28 right now currently, right? No, I mean, I started doing it when I was 25. Okay. I'm, I'm 31 now. So I've been doing this since uh, 2000 and 2013, 2014. So six years now. Okay, man. And then 2017, that's when you started your uh, USA wide operations, correct? Uh, no, no, that evolved. So back then I was just doing it in Austin, Houston, San Antonio. And, you know, the reason I was doing other places besides Austin is because it's kind of like a, you know, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, yeah. very competitive, high cost per deal. Um, you know, the homeowners here, there's not, it's not like a distressed market at all. You know, it's right. the Silicon Valley of, you know, uh, Texas. So, so you, so you did live that, you know, that local hyper targeted local wholesaling, uh, real estate investing operations. You actually did that. And for how long do you do it? Then you realized that there's opportunity doing it in the all US. How long? Uh, it was like, you know, probably two years. I uh, tell like 2015 and 2016, I was doing a lot of SEO to try to get more inbound leads around central Texas. But the result of it was I was getting leads from Pennsylvania, Ohio, you know, Washington state, pretty much everywhere except for central Texas. Yeah. And I would just start them. Like I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't do anything with them. And, uh, you know, I was just hyper-focused on the Texas market. And what ended up happening was it was like, you know what, I'm just going to take a shot at, you know, some of these leads. So I think the first one I got under contract was in like Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, you know, trash house, got it for 18 K, you know, wholesaled it for 30, made 12, you know, 12,000. So that was proof of concept right there. Then like, we got another one real quick in Ohio. And then it was like, man, I really don't give a shit where these properties are. Like, you know, as long as we can comp them and there's a market there, there's cash buyers, we could find people like, why would we geographically limit ourselves to yeah. just, you know, one market? Okay. So you cover a lot of good points there, man. Like for example, you covered how you were leveraging SEO, right? Which mm -hmm. is, it, it's a good way of doing organic inbound. Uh, you really don't have to reach out and, you know, pull multiple lists of like, and trying to guess for each specific market, what's going to be the best pain points or the stacking list that you're going to be calling and having operations and every single time and huge team, you leverage SEO, which is uh, getting your website optimized and ranked high in certain specific areas or where like you want it to rank. And uh, as soon as you got a motivated seller, uh, how, how, how did you even start the first time on deciding, okay, I get a motivated seller and I don't know this market um, like at all or not much. And I don't have a, an investor that I can send it to. I don't have a, a cash buyer I can send it to. What was your thought process there? Like then when you were just starting and how do you like go, go for it? Shoot first and ask questions later. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, don't, I didn't think about it. I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to take a shot on it. I'm going to call this lady, see what she wants. I have no idea. I've never been in this place. I have no idea what the hell this even is, but I know there's data online. Like I can go on Zillow, look at the sold data. You know, I, they got tools now like prop stream and stuff like that. So I think back then I used like Zillow and Redfin and I was just looking at the comparable sales and I just used my best judgment as to what I thought the property was worth. And I wasn't too far off and I was able to, you know, contract it at the right price. And then when it came to getting rid of it, obviously I don't know anybody in that market. So I was like, all right, well, who can I reach out to? I think I leveraged like some Facebook groups. I reached out to some people in some Facebook groups there, you know, DM them and told them like, Hey man, I just got a property under contract in your market. Are you still buying there? And then, you know, I got people messaging me back. Now they're interested. They want to go see the property. And next thing you know, they're, you know, putting an offer in and we're locking up an assignment and going to closing. Yeah. Awesome, man. So when you decided to actually go, okay, look, this is, this is working. I'm getting deals that are off my local market. It's good. 
Uh, when do you actually decide, okay, I'm, now I'm going to try this other market. Uh, now, then I'm going to try this other market. And how, what was your old reasoning behind there? Like deciding what, which markets you're going to go for. It was basically, where am I going to get the best return on my marketing dollars, right? Like Austin ain't it. I mean, you'll pay $8,500 for a wholesale deal here that you might net like 11000 on. It doesn't really make the most logical sense. So I'm like, I could spend, you know, $1,000 in a market like, you know, Wichita, Kansas, and, you know, make a $15,000 assignment fee. Like it, I just analyzed different markets in the United States and, um, you know, started looking at the ARVs. You know, the ARVs are important to how much your spreads are going to be, right? If you got a, you know, a $250,000 average median sales price, you're going to be able to get a lot bigger assignment fees than if you're in some you know, smaller market that's got $50,000 know, yeah. average, right? So I was just looking at different demographic data. And I mean, I spent, you know, nights and weekends, you know, analyzing different markets in the United States to really like, you know, decide where am I going to deploy capital? Yeah, man, that's 100%. Like know, knowing the numbers so that you know which KPIs you're kind of expecting. It's 100% one of the first things that people got to gotta, gotta actually know when going to an unknown, unknown market. And I'm pretty sure those are the things that you currently still do if you were to do uh, go to an unknown market. I mean, we just did a huge leads analysis last week because I've been blanking in the United States for a long time now. So, you know, I've got... I think it was like 25 or 26,000 leads that we did a analysis on to figure out, you know, okay, well, where is our, our actual profit coming from? Like, right. Hey, we might be getting a lot of leads in this market, but how much profit is coming out of there? So we did a big analysis on the entire United States. And I realized, you know, pretty quickly, like um, 80% of our revenue is coming from 56 counties in the U S. So now I've got, strategic campaigns just targeting the crap out of those 60 or 50 56 counties 56 counties and that's like how many states is all the states or yeah it, they're scattered throughout the u.s i think there's like 3300 counties and 56 of them is where i was pulling you know i've been pulling 80 percent of my profit yeah okay that's good so but you were so you were able of course you sacrificed at the beginning uh a little bit of the profit opportunity uh, by testing out different markets. Cause you said like last week you, you did that specific, uh, lead cost and, uh, profit, profit cost yeah. analysis. Right. Uh, so you had to go in, uh, balls deep into this other markets that probably are not that, you know, great of a profit, but you still had to do it in order to know those numbers. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you don't know until, it, until you try. So, yeah, man. <laughs> so one thing that when, when we spoke that really, really astonished me is right now you have about like, what is it that you said? Two million more of, of uh, partners and cash buyers or people that you know that when you have a deal now, you can send it to them. And now it's going to be something quickly. You don't have to look for someone um, random or try to market it like crazy correct is that is that something that that's uh that you have I mean, right we have now? over 2.2 million buyers there you go uh, in our database but i mean the majority of them are still random so you know if we're blasting a deal out we're developing relationships with new people all the time now in markets that we've done deals before we had and have existing relationships we leverage those people that have bought properties from us uh, we try not to blast properties out because we have so much buyer data that if we blast out a property like we'll be talking to people all day long yeah absolutely so and you definitely but you definitely uh do your qualification criteria for each buyer because you maybe some people that are out there to say oh yeah i'll buy properties but they really don't qualify to like find the property or like they're, they're not really as qualified buyers so I'm pretty sure you have a do you have a process to qualify oh, we got a script yeah they, we, yeah it's, we have a script that basically like gets cuts right to the chase and they're either in or out within, you know, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay. So now you have someone delegated, let's say a VA, uh, a VA. I don't use VAs. First of all, oh, I don't no? really, 
I got like some admin VAs that do admin tasks, but no, all my staff are uh, U.S. You know, in-house employees. We don't do the virtual, you know, work from home, you know, digital nomad crap. We're in office. It's a hardcore, you know, sales environment. That's, that's the way we run it. Wow, man. That's, that's exceptional. All of them are in Austin or where, where are they? They're all right here where they're all at lunch right now. They need to get their ass back. But yeah, no, they're all, they're all here. <laughs> They'll be back. Like, they're ring just, the bell. Time to right. go back to work, man. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're they're in here right now. So. <laughs> okay, man. No, that's awesome. Because, like, look at that. Like, a lot of people leverage virtual assistants, uh, of course, to, like, because they, they want to start small. The, like, the budget's small. And, like, a virtual assistant can cost, like, three, four, five dollars an hour, which is good. But ultimately, well, what what helps you scale is a team, right? Ultimately, ultimately, a team that you want to go right next to you and, and you know, call them, hey, hey, we need to do something. We, do, we, we need to do a quick meeting. No Zoom lag, no nothing. Ultimately, that's exactly how a company, how a corporation is constituted, right? Which are employees, actual employees. So like, man, props for that. Uh, did you ever use virtual assistants at, at all before? Yeah, when I was in my nine to five job, I had a, a really, really good uh, VA that I spent a lot of time with training. And she was like my right hand girl when I was in corporate America because I couldn't always answer the phone. Yeah, you know? man. So <laughs> she was doing a lot of the, um, you know, qualification, appointment scheduling, initial comparables, um, you know, handling the phones while I was while I was at work. So. That was that was a blessing. So if you are in like a nine to five job, uh, you know, having a killer, you know, VA um, is definitely recommended when you're getting started. Yeah, man. But once you get out and you've got and you can start hiring employees, there's no comparison. You know, absolutely. No, I I believe that, man. Yeah, yeah. I definitely believe that. I mean, definitely people can leverage uh, what remote positions are in order to in order to uh, you know. Streamline your operations in order to have a, a, a team and quickly delegate your time. Uh, but ultimately, um, you want to keep a lot of things in house, especially when you're working in a USA wide campaigns uh, every single day where you have to deal with actual US homeowners. Uh, probably each market is different. For example, a homeowner will definitely talks a different language than a homeowner in, in, in Texas than a homeowner in Oklahoma and uh, US, US based US based employees definitely know that language rather than someone in Philippines or someone like that. Right. So that's I agree, definitely, yeah, I agree. And you don't want them asking, you know, the homeowners if they got a bamboo roof and hear a bunch of roosters in the background. <laughs> you know, how it is in the Philippines. Yeah, I, I love them. They're hard workers. They do, you know, they do a great job, but there is that cultural difference. Yeah, uh, man. That 100%. Dollars can pick up on and it's, it def, it's, it's not a good thing for um, conversion and, and, you know, those kind of KPIs. Man, you got this running in three years, right? Want to sell now.com. It was founded. It was founded three years ago, correct? No, nah, I've been doing this six years, man. So okay. I've been doing this since 2014. Okay. I, you know, I had to have a job for the first um, two years because, you know, that's how long it took me to get it going. You know, I was making good money in corporate America, but I got common lawed. So I lost all my material possessions, you know, in 2000 and early 2016, I lost everything. Uh, like basically my entire savings, my you know, sky rise apartment, cars, and I had to build my way back up. So it took me two years in the corporate world um, before I was able to make the jump. On hey, man, it's pretty yeah. remarkable. Uh, I actually just a little story here uh, just to let you know, I got I was working in corporate Mar America the, the past three years and a half. March 23rd of this year, I got laid off uh, because of COVID. And then that's when I actually went ahead and full time and focus on my agency and focus. I, have, I run a JV operations here locally in Michigan, but my agency, which really, really helps also real estate investors with inbound operations, 
that was my focus after getting let off. So I totally like when you do that change, man, it's a, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different, different animal. And the fact that you did it in such a short, call it relatively short period of time is remarkable, man. So like, honestly, uh, like congratulations on that. Now, when you started, man, you really had the idea, like want to sell now.com. That one, that is like basically a brand. Like basically like people are going to see want to sell now and also is very SEO friendly, right? So what, what did you think about? Like, did you think about want to sell now.com like right away? Or was, was it a strategy that you had? Just let, just, you know, I, I, no, want I, to needed, I needed a name for my company and I got lucky on GoDaddy after typing in fucking domain names for four hours. And finally that was available in 2014. And that was the one that I picked from like the list of, you know, 20 available domain domain names that made my list. Yeah, so, man. <laughs> yeah. But you know it what? wasn't it, anything like methodical or thought out. It was just, I was, you know, I think how a lot of people start is they just start thinking about names and typing them into a uh, GoDaddy to see if they're available. And I got lucky. Absolutely, man. But with, with that, with that domain now, there's different opportunities that you can even do in the future, man. Maybe you can have another stream of income out of that domain. But I don't know if you know that there is different like companies like need to fail, need to sell fast, uh, need to sell my home fast.com and things like that, where right. they uh, also do wholesale operations. They have like real estate investing operations, but they also sell their leads. And uh, that's like another stream of income that they have, like they charge like $200, $300 per lead in auctions, right? So right. like it, it, there is an opportunity there too. But all right, so I've seen you in, in Facebook and actually uh, that's the main reason why I re like the first time I reached out, like the first thing was like, first of all, you targeted me with an ad, right? Of course, I'm active as well in real estate uh, investing and, and like seeing houses uh, and things like that. And uh, I saw your video, man. Like, first of all, like you're, you're very, very confident in video. Uh, and uh, you are using video, of course, with wanttosellnow.com to generate leads through Facebook ads, correct? Mm -hmm. so, so like, how's that, how's that going? Like, tell me like your marketing channels, like you do Facebook, you do Google ads, correct? Is that what you do? You correct. still do SEO. Is there, is there any other marketing channel that you do there? I would do Google, Facebook, Bing, Instagram. It's all online. So, um, I, and we do radio as well, but everything is inbound. I don't like doing offline outbound marketing. Uh, I've been there, done that. I've sent enough direct mail, enough RVMs, enough SMSs, done enough freaking cold calls, hired enough companies that yeah, you know, that's what works for us is just the inbound marketing. It's, you know, you're going to get a better quality lead when people are coming to you. Yeah. Going after them. Right. So, and, and your acquisition department also has like have better conversations out of the bat with these leads because so like these leads, uh, first of all, they're, they don't want to, they're not going to tell you, fuck you. Like, don't call me. Where'd you get my number? There is, there is an intention there, for example. So there, it's easier to talk to them. Right. And as soon as they come in, uh, there might, there, there might be an intention to right now, listen to how much like your offer is. And of course, get into their motivation why they need to sell in order to do right there, uh, a, uh, a, um, an offer for a contract, right? So, so right now you're acquisition, you have an acquisition team that deals with all the inbound operations, correct? What's your right. process there? How, how do you have that process out in terms of following up with inbound leads? Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about, about that, I'm, I'm really interested in knowing about that process. Yeah. So I have within acquisitions, um, we have, it's two departments in acquisitions. We've got junior acquisitions and also senior acquisitions. So have you ever seen the movie like boiler room where like 
you know, they're, they're banging calls and then they get somebody on the line and they pat, you know, they call Vin Diesel, like, Hey man, I got one. Like I got one on the line. That's yeah, how yeah. our junior acquisitions is. So what I noticed was our, um, at first it was just senior acquisitions. You know, you get a lead, you take it all the way through the process to close it. But what I noticed was they were spending a ton of time by uh, getting people on the phones and doing initial qualification of the leads. So they weren't spending the time, you know, doing the needs analysis with the sellers, you know, building value in the offer, you know, underwriting deals and getting contracts. And that's where money's made, right? That top right. half of the funnel is really just busy work. So right. I eliminated that for them by bringing in uh, junior acquisitions. And they're the ones that are pulling through the database, talking to people, seeing if they want to uh, still sell their property. If they do, you know, they get a little bit of information and they live transfer it over to our senior acquisitions to you know, pick up the conversation and close the deal. So you got a pipeline, which is the acquisitions pipeline. This picture like that, a lead comes in and then someone that is going to basically do an appointment, be an appointment setter uh, for inbound leads. Yeah. I mean, we do everything over the phone right? and they don't set appointments. We live transfer, but live yes, transfer only. You can call awesome. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, so that means that your, your, uh, not your uh, senior acquisition managers are always going to be available for a live transfer. Correct. Yeah. So we have, we are, we have our department in acquisition. We have six, we have, Three juniors and three seniors. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And what, so what if, what, what happens like, for example, if this person, uh, if you guys, if you guys get many leads at once, of course, it will be like a matter of, uh, getting more acquisition people or how, how do you guys, yeah, do no, I mean, there's been times where, you know, all everybody's on the phones and in that scenario, say if uh, junior acquisitions has somebody to pass over and nobody's available, then they'll just say, all right, hey, yeah, and I'll have them give you a call back here within the hour. Is that okay? Or in the next 20 minutes, is that okay? And then they'll slack over the podio card and they'll go physically over to their desk and like call Sherry, put it on a sticky note, slap it on their monitor, you know, and that's kind of how we operate. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm a big believer, man, of automation, like full automation, because it helps with conversion, especially with inbound leads. These list leads are sometimes, you know, honestly, they're distracted. Just imagine you going up and down. Maybe you're thinking about shoes and you want to buy shoes. A shoes advertising comes in. You want you put in your information, but then you get distracted and then you lose that opportunity if you if if that lead if that sorry if that person that is selling shoes does not either message you or call you or send you an email about it you you kind of lose track out of it so do you guys currently have an automated systems that follow up with the leads right away uh even if it is a text message or an email yeah we do so we have you know automated uh email and text messages that go out and say hey you know we'll be giving you a call from a 512 number in the next 24 hours to you know give you a cash offer look forward to speaking with you, you awesome know, awesome just to give that initial touch until our acquisitions can you know, reach out and get them on the phone awesome how about how about how about if that first message didn't trigger a respond or maybe your acquisitions people got uh, at some point, busy with other leads that are stacked. Uh, do you have a sequence that nurtures that lead uh, like further on? Yeah, we got humans, man. They're humans. banging every single day, fucking pulling <laughs> list out of our podio, pulling 3,000 freaking leads at a time and sitting on Mojo Dialer until they answer, you know, harassing the shit out of them on text, email. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I get where you're going with the whole, like, yeah, make sure everything's automated and it's sequenced out. Nah, I don't do that shit anymore, man. That's I'd rather get actual people that um, are incentivized to do the work, you know, than than a robot and AI and to yeah. go for me. And I, I mean, I, there's merit to both, but you know, we've just I've had better success, better conversion when I've got actual people that are reaching out to these leads quickly getting them on the phone, passing them to closers. Yeah, man. Yeah. And actually I was going to go and point that 
the best type of follow up is always a human being. Like, correct. Like, that's the best type of follow up. When I can get AI to close deals, I will be the first person to jump on it. But that day hasn't that hasn't arrived yet. Absolutely, man. So yeah. I have a member. So let me tell you a story, man. I have a member that works. We we work together based off Washington, right? He does Washington, Oregon, and Hawaii. And uh, so he w- used to be only Washington only. And then one time I, 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 I said, let's go do USA wide. Let's see if you can figure it out. We targeted the highest, uh, you know, the top 150 counties in the USA. And we started getting leads so, so, so bad, like so fast. Like probably we were paying like two to four dollars per lead and these were all sellers but we had a problem man that a lot of the sellers were outside of the reach of potential buyers or acquisition like uh because they're not desirable areas or there is really no way that we could get into into mm-hmm. something like that, into uh into a deal there because of the area where the lead where they live but of course they're motivated and they wanted to sell. And we, we got a probably in one month, like 52 people on their contract. But like, 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 they not, man. Uh, yeah. you they, end they, up dropping. they dropped up. like most yeah. all of them, only two closed <laughs> right. out of 252, man. So like dominating that, that you currently have is literally a huge scale, man. Uh, it's, it's a lot of people, I'm pretty sure they try. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta know what to look for, right? Like we call those like rural leads. We just tag them as does not meet our criteria. And we tag the, you know, tag it as a rural lead. Cause yeah, if you got a lead and nobody wants to buy it because it's in the middle of BFE, like don't waste your time with it, you know, go back and, you know, try to fix your marketing campaign. So you're not showing up in BFE anymore. Right. Um, yeah, we still get those leads that pop through that are in the middle of nowhere. And if there's not, you know, supporting comparables or, you know, a lot of listed sold activity going on there, you know, it's in a town of 500 people. It's not going to be, it's probably not going to be a deal. I mean, yes, you can, you can do all kinds of creative financing, but I mean, for what we do, which is we're a volume wholesale shop, it's, we just, we don't mess with those leads. Yeah. Do you do subject to as well? Yeah. Yeah. We sub to, we wholesale sub to. Um, so that's one of, one of the strategies we do is, you know, we'll you know, get desirable, uh, you know, desirable deals for sub two and we'll lock them up sub two and give them to, you know, people that want that cash flow and equity and, and serve it to them on a silver platter. Man, that's sweet. Sub two is another good strategy because a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Nick agrees with this. There is a lot of, there is a lot of leads that come from the uh, online, uh, online data. A lot of inbound motivated sellers, they have the intention to sell. They really want to sell, uh, but it might be a low equity home, right? It might not be a high equity that, that qualifies for a wholesale deal or f- fix and flip, whatever it is. Uh, so you, you have to like have different, different ways of skin the cat when, when you deal with online, uh, leads, you, you, yeah, if man, you there's can't plenty of buyers that love picking up sub twos, right? Absolutely, man. So you can, you can get fucking good assignment fees locking those up. Yeah, man. So, you know, anybody that's, you know, throwing those leads away, you're, you're probably paying too much for, uh, marketing. Yeah. It's a pain that I also have because when I get a member to work together with me and they only do wholesale, but at the same time, they want to do on inbound uh, and they miss the opportunity or they toss away opportunities for, for sub twos or things like that is painful because I know there is an opportunity there and you can't really do much about it. Uh, you're, you're, putting, you're wasting money. You're literally putting money on the table. You're not grabbing it. Yeah, I mean, we got two that are closing this week. One's for 15K, another one's for 10K. Yeah, that otherwise would have been dead deals to most. Exactly. And I know when you're getting started, it's kind of a lot just to wrap your head around getting wholesaling, right? Yeah. I didn't start doing the sub two thing until like 
a few months, like a year ago, maybe. So, yeah, man. you know, I understand. It's like, what the hell? The sub two, like, I don't want to deal with it. I can't think about it. Like, I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to do it. I'm just going to laser focus. I respect that. I understand <laughs> that. But yeah, do yourself a favor and learn it. It's really not hard. And once you do, you got, you know, more opportunities to convert those, those leads. So that, that's a good tip that you can give to anyone. Like you really want to get into like online, actually be a real estate investor, get, you know, get to know, get to do your uh, sub two uh, education, like get to know how to close these deals. If you get a sub two, accept it and then figure it out. Like you said, you go in first and then you'll be able to figure it out later. Right. Yeah, you can pass those deals to cash buyers that are going to come in and give you freaking cash at closing. So it's not yeah. like you have to take this sub two and now you're going to wrap it and you're going to hold this property. You don't have to do it that way. You can get assignment fees on sub twos. Which are wholesale sub twos, right? Yeah, the key, key word to listen to any sellers are, I just want to get you know what I paid for it. When right. You hear that, yeah, man. That's, of course, that's your, that's your golden word. Like, I just want, I just want enough to pay off my mortgage. Like, okay, well, what's your mortgage, right? And then figure out what the rents are in that market. Is there a spread there? Can you come in and um, get, a, you know, an investor to pay you fifteen, twenty, twenty-five k to take over and get that cash flow? A lot of times, the answer is yes. Yeah, man, absolutely. So, so for example, you can even. Let's say uh, if people were to send you uh, leads to you, motivated sellers for JV, and, uh, would you take them? Because you know many uh, many cash buyers around the U.S. Are you open? Yeah, I mean we're very particular. Like, you know, if you're um, looking to do that, you can reach out to me on Instagram or whatever. But know what you're doing because they're going to go to my COO, and he is the deal killer. So if your deal sucks it's never going to see my dispo. Yeah. Period. So <laughs> if you got a real deal and you need help with it, I will absolutely get that shit moved for you. If it's a deal, I can move it anywhere in the country, but it's got to be a deal. If you got, you know, got it locked up too high or there's some sort of, you know, economic factor to why that property can't sell, you know, there's, that's the thing you have to know when you're doing nationwide is, you know, we've learned U.S. geography very well over the last three years to know all these different variables. Like the biggest example I give is I was helping some wholesaler in Phoenix, right? He locks up, he's doing nationwide now. He locks up a property in, I think it was like, you know, outside of Memphis. And he's like, dude, this property's, you know, cash flowing $800 a month and it's only $15,000. And I was like, you realize you can go on the MLS and get those properties. And right. that just blew his mind because, you know, being from Phoenix, that's freaking unheard of. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you just have to know, you know, the different markets, you know, do your research before you lock something up, you know, make sure it's a good deal. And yeah, if anybody needs help, I'm happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. So like, okay, let's get into some juicy details here. It's time for juicy details for real estate okay. marketing and, uh, and conversion. So you started Austin, uh, but then went into other markets that got you at from that you got from SEO and other yeah, I was getting leads randomly from all over the country. Got and it. So I just started, uh, yeah, I started closing those and then I was like, screw it, I'm gonna start throwing marketing dollars nationwide. I'm already getting free leads nationwide, like, might as well put this thing on steroids, and that's kind of how it, how it evolved. And did you choose which specific markets you would just want, like, boom, let's just do it all USA, let's target all USA. How was it? How I was, was like, uh, yeah, let's target the U.S. and see what the hell happens. And yeah, similar to you know what you and uh, you and that other guy were you know, working through, is again trash leads everywhere. So then I had to go in and actually hone, prune down my locations. So you know I was you know not getting those you know rural trash cities, and you know I was able to do that. So now we're you know pretty laser focused nationwide in the you know, certain MSAs that are going to give us the best returns. Is there a way you can give a, a give away at least five markets that are good if you if you want to do like a, a, a virtual wholesale approach? I mean, if you want the easiest way to go virtual, just freaking pick five of New Western's markets, lock deals up and fucking wholesale them to New Western. New like, Western. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the easiest way. If you want to, if you want to do it, you don't want to go through all the headaches of trying to build your own buyers list and do all the dispo and everything. You know, you could easily just pick five markets that net worth realty or new Western acquisitions or Keegley are in and lock up deals there and just give them to them and they'll do the entire dispo process for you. And that's it. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to like, you know, go on the, and find the buyers yourself or, you know, have, have another complete different business for dispo, which it sometimes it could be a full different business, a disposition business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're like all over the place. Well, not really all over the place, but in, in markets that are not local. So definitely it's a, that's a good advice. If you were to like do the acquisition side and then um, leave the disposition to other people while you, while you gain some momentum, more knowledge, more experience. But to answer your question more directly, where do I, like what states do I like? Uh, Texas, California, Louisiana, uh, North Carolina. Um, I'm looking at the map right now. Um, Washington, uh, Arkansas is good. Uh, Florida, uh, New York, Illinois. Those, those would probably be my favorites. And in terms of counties, is there a specific counties that you would say like, yeah, go ahead. You'll get, you'll get some success with counties. I mean, we crush it in Chicago because you're not supposed to wholesale there. So we've been, I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission. We haven't been slapped on the wrist. We've closed yeah. uh, 30 <laughs> or 40 deals there this year. Um, Illinois is good. I mean, you might get in trouble wholesaling there, but maybe you won't. I haven't yet. So hopefully nobody's going to rat on me on this podcast. But No, man. Uh, if, no, something, no, if something, yeah. we're going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, um, no, uh, I would I would also check out New York. A lot of people are scared of New York, especially upstate New York is really good. Rochester, Buffalo, um, Syracuse. We pull a lot of money out of those cities. Um, so those are some you know, areas you could start with. Um, Florida is good, kind of in the middle of Florida, like South Florida, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So it's too competitive, overpriced in my opinion, but kind of that Tampa, Orlando, you know, Daytona beach area. That's all, you know, really good. We do really well there as well. Sweet, man. Sweet, sweet. And uh, like, like I said, like we said, anyone can get started by literally running a Facebook ad campaign. Or if you have a little bit more money, even Google, but since it's USA wide, costs are gonna go down. You just gotta figure out, first of all, you gotta have your acquisition game really on point. And then disposition, you gotta be able to find a way to disposition this property. So there is a lot of things that you can leverage. You can leverage other disposition companies like, like uh, New Western, like Nick was saying, Kigley, right? And, yeah. uh, and, and, and other, probably do other JVs. You can literally start doing that by all doing also JVs on with local people down there. Uh, then you get some momentum. Uh, now, for example, Nick, so you said you had like people like going in acquisition really strong, really hard. Um, so one of our members, they, the way they do that is we, they have four acquisition people, um, actually three acquisition people similar to you. And, uh, of course these are offshore, but, uh, his game, their game is, it's kind of like a, like a bidding, like not, not a bidding, but it's, uh, they're going to put, they're going to send the lead to any of these acquisition people. And the first one that follows up with that person and the first one that talks with that person and kind of like locks that in is the one that get, it's going to get the, uh, the you know, the commission out of it. So it's kind of like, it pushes them to follow up as quickly as he can, especially because it's inbound leads. Uh, and also, of course, follow up with them if they need to follow up. Uh, would you, would you say that this strategy sounds good or how do you, how do you do that, uh, to push your acquisition people to get all these leads? Yeah. I mean, we round Robin the leads, so they each have a book of business essentially that they're working um you can do the free-for-all method but you just risk like then you got to have you know strict business rules in place like you know who touched the lead what time do they touch the lead like 
it, and you could do it with clear business rules. I think it's a great idea. Like, you, you know, you're going to incentivize, you know, the people to get through their leads quicker, but we're, we have junior acquisitions who call the untouched leads. So we don't have a problem with, um, you know, speed of lead. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, you know, a speed of lead is really important. Follow-up is really important. Human follow-up is huge. Uh, and you still use Podio, right? Yeah, we still use Podio. Okay. Uh, I hate Podio, but... <laughs> hey, you know, it, is, it gets, I know we, all, we all live with it. I mean, I could go get a you know, sales force, but it's, you know, you're going to pay 50 grand for a build-out on that. Yeah, you know, Podio does the job good enough right now for me. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, man. Uh, man, that's, that's super nice. So, all right. So you grow, you grow your team. How many people are in your team right now? Right now? Uh, 11, 11 people. Okay. Uh, and if you, there's things about entrepreneurs like you that, you know, just think outside the box and take a problem or an opportunity that comes out of nowhere and literally capitalize on that, which is USA wide campaigns, getting leads out of nowhere. I and mean, how do I close them? But you were able to go and 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 you know take it take leverage that uh, people are not doing that right now. Um, how 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 would you say that someone that wants to do and and they know that they need to build a team in order to do that? In what order would you start building a team to go where you are right now with with throughout time? I mean, if you're a solopreneur, you're going to have to. You know, obviously you're doing everything. You're doing marketing all the way through dispositions finance everything but you know that's going to be the way it is for a while and then you know you're going to get once you start generating leads you're going to get busy right like next thing you know you've got a bunch of leads in the pipeline now you've got deals that you're dispoing and you're doing acquisitions right so you know after you start getting deals and you've got consistent marketing i, I wouldn't hire anybody until You've got consistent marketing coming in and you're locking up deals consistently. Once you get to that point, you know, which can happen fairly quickly, as long as you've got good marketing coming in, then, you know, now it's time to go out and hire an acquisitions. And I'm not saying you're going to just, you know, you're hiring acquisitions and then now you don't have to do acquisitions anymore. No. Now you just got help, basically. Right. So they're going to come in do acquisitions basically alongside of you. And then you can focus a little bit more on dispositions and things like that, but you're still going to be doing acquisitions. And then next thing you know, the new guys closing deals, right? So now you're like, all right, we're going to turn up market. We're going to turn up marketing a little bit more, make sure he's doing well. And then bring in another acquisitions. Now you got two acquisitions. And at this point you should be able to slide over and just be dispoing those deals. So now you're just, doing dispo, finance, marketing, figuring out how you're going to push your company forward, helping the guys on acquisitions, underwrite deals. That becomes your job. Then yeah. next you know, is you got multiple, you got too many deals. So now you got to hire a dispo, right? And then it kind of just builds out like that. Yeah. And the good thing, man, that you have an advantage is since these are inbound leads, you let you you literally pay in Facebook, Google, and doing your website work to to do the really the, the hard work, which usually a wholesale operation will consist on pulling a list, figuring out exactly which list, of course, skip tracing, then making sure that you call call or ask do SMS campaigns where you follow up with these leads, uh, you you qualify furthermore. And then you, after that, it starts the acquisition process. So right now you don't have to do all of that. You don't have to do like the skip tracing, training your people to do skip tracing, training your people to pull the right list, training to be for to people to, uh, to, you know, kind of adjust to the mark changes in the market, um, training your people for cold call, call for cold calling, which is a different animal than right. inbound calling. Exactly. That's the beauty of online, right? Right. It, you know, it, that stuff is is a headache to me. I hate it. So yeah. I choose not to do it. I'd rather just spend my time getting really good at online lead generation than spend my time getting really good at pulling lists and making sure, you know, VAs are saying the right things on the phone when they're cold calling. Like that to me is not not the most fun. 
And obviously yeah. outsource that, but then you have third party vendors that are responsible for, you know, execution and you're risking a lot of money in the hands of a vendor. So it's just not my preferred source. And some people absolutely crush it on those offline platforms. It works, it works, definitely. But you need to find out, you know, for you personally, you know, what marketing resonates with you the most and really run with it. For me, it's online marketing. I know some guys that, you know, absolutely dominate in pretty much any marketing channel though. So, yeah, man. So for example, um, as a, our members, they use either Facebook, Instagram, and Instagram, and they also use Google AdWords, which I'm pretty sure that you, you do. Uh, and we also help them with the SEO. Now, there's another animal that we are going to dominate probably in the next months. Uh, that one is YouTube because, as you know, Google oh, AdWords. We do. Yeah, I do YouTube as well. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. man. I really want to see your, like, your, like, interruption plus, uh, you know, the pitch that you see, the hook and the pitch that you, that you, uh, usually do on YouTube in order to get those motivated sellers to, uh, to work with you and trust you right away. Right. Um, I really want to get and fall into one of your uh, YouTube ads. Hopefully I get retargeted at some point. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. Um, retargeting on YouTube ads is fucking cheap cost per lead. So, right. Yeah. I think I just have like a basic explainer video up there. It's like a cartoon explainer video. I have multiple videos, but um, they're nothing, they're nothing out of the ordinary. So, you know, I would get on, and if you're not running YouTube ads right now, uh, you can run it right out of your Google campaign. And the targeting is you can really you know, dial in on either remarketing or target in on what your you know what the avatar is on what you're looking for. It's pretty killer. Yeah, man. Have you have you um, have you gotten to like maybe say, hey, I'm, instead of this videos, I'm just gonna do a video myself. Be like, hey, if you guys are. If you're a homeowner and you're looking to sell your property fast because you don't want to deal with all of the hassles of putting it in the market, uh, then you can, we can get you a, a, an offer, a cash offer. Are, are you, have you been thinking about doing that? Because I see you doing that really, really well with Facebook. I did that with Facebook just because my Facebook guy that runs my campaigns is like, I need you to go out and create a video. And so I, like, I went to a random house around the corner from where I'm at right now and, and took it outside of these people's houses. But um, I need to create more actual content with myself. Uh, you know, that ad that I recorded from that 10 second ad, uh, converts like crazy. So, um, yes, that's all my agenda is to make more, make more content. Absolutely. Cause ultimately video, what it does is, well, video as, as more, uh, the more you show it to people, let's say a homeowner that is distressed, uh, you're going to bring familiarity. Yeah. And so you show it one, two, three times, you retarget them. Another video of you comes in. Now they're trusting you because you are that authority in, uh, in, in, in buying houses, right? Now I can say like, this guy is actually going to buy my house. I've seen him everywhere and I see his, per his face. Uh, now that cat breed, breed easily sells, uh, when they see you in a video. And you can't really do that offline. You're just like call, calling someone and then yeah, there is the, fuck you, don't talk to me. <laughs> You're going to be um, your brand's best spokesperson. Yes. Anyway. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's important. That's one of the things that I'm going to be emphasizing on. I just, I mean, if you look at my social media, I rarely post. I don't do a whole lot of like in front of the camera type thing. So it's kind of new for me. I know I need to break out of my comfort zone and get out there and go. Yeah. Yeah. But your by your company wants to sell now that right now you you guys have a social media management. You guys are posting like really good organized content. Correct. Uh, yeah. Now the Facebook um I use Kyle Allen. He's a beast. If you talk to him, you can tell him I referred you. Um super, super nice guy. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have a conversation with you. You can reach out to him pretty much on any social media platform. But his name's Kyle Allen. He's, he does a good job with my campaigns. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I'll reach out to him. It's, it's always good to network with people that are in the space, um, especially because he's killing your campaign, uh, the uh, USA Motivated Sellers, man. So what do you think of 
will be the next steps that you need to do in order to take your business to the next level? Next level for me right now, we're looking at doing yeah, more of the same right now because we've got a machine that works, right? We've gone through so much pain of getting a business up and going and perfecting the systems, you know, making sure our, our numbers are right. So now we're you know, very profitable and it's going to be strategically just adding key personnel onto the team and, you know, increasing marketing. I don't think that I'm not going to like go hire, you know, 10 people tomorrow, but I'm going to continue to just build out my, my wholesaling operation. And then additionally, we're doing commercial, which is going to be where the bulk of my revenue comes from in the future. Okay. Awesome. So now you're going to focus on really growing the team, which is going to eventually help you expand, you know, just do things uh, more streamlined. And you're, you're right now, man, you're, you're a corporate, you're, you're a company, you're, you're not a solo entrepreneur. Now you can, I think you said to me like last week, you were just, um, where were you? I think you were like traveling, correct? No, I think I was at the gym. I mean, ah. my business, it runs itself pretty, pretty much. I don't have to be here. You know, I own other businesses as well. I was down in San Antonio today buying a semi truck this morning. You know, I came back into the office, checked on the guys. I went to the gym. Now I'm back here doing this podcast with you. You know, so I don't, I'm basically the cheerleader at this point. Like I'm like the Jordan Belfort where I'll go out and, you know, get the guys excited and yeah, you know, talk some <laughs> shit, see, see where the deals are at. And you're, that's you're the, my job at this point. You're the wolf of wholesaling, man. <laughs> <laughs> Trying, man. We'll see. I mean, we're moving in the right direction. We got a good team of people. So um, I'm excited for, for what the rest of the, the year holds and going into next year as well. That's sweet, man. Now, uh, are you in terms of maybe other business opportunities out there? Um, are you gonna, let's say you fire yourself, you already fire yourself out of the, out of the, out of the business. W would you be considering creating other businesses now? Um, I mean, I own a trucking company, like a semi truck, over the road truck driving. So we're taking stuff all over the United States. And I've sweet. got trucks out on the road right now. Um, you know, I've got that Amazon automation thing going. I'm always learning and, you know, figuring out what's going to be, you know, the best way to put myself in a position to, you know, be the, to max out my potential. So, you know, another company that I'm creating right now is strictly commercial. It'll be here in my office, but it's going to be, it's a, it's an entirely different entity where we're going to be focused on going after, you know, distressed commercial assets, you know, the, commercial realm has been absolutely crushed with, you know, the pandemic. So you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the commercial realm. So we're, we're starting that now. Um, and I'm, you know, that's bigger assets, you know, bigger paychecks. So, um, you know, I'm always learning, always trying to figure out what's, what's hot. You know, I'm doing a lot of crypto stuff right now. So there's, you know, always opportunities. I'm always trying to get better and always learn. Yeah, man. So like one good thing that people need to need to know is one of the main goals as an entrepreneur, as someone that like us is we got to be able to a business dominated, shape a team around it, be able to be able to run it in autopilot, be able to fire yourself uh, in order to work on the business rather than in the business. And now you're going to be able to actually create more and visualize things with a clearer head. Because you're you're gonna have more time, like like Nick does, uh, in order to yeah start a new venture or focus on scaling like really high. But like like he's saying, he's always learning. I think one of the things that we gotta keep going doing is uh, we gotta say like I I don't know anything, and uh, that means that I'm gonna keep learning something. Uh, maybe there's a better way always, right? Absolutely. I mean, you have to just be either a voracious a reader or like me, I'm constantly on YouTube, you know, learning about new things. I'm constantly taking courses, like new courses. Um, and that's what's going to help, help you be successful. I mean, that's essentially how I got good at wholesaling was just, you know, educating myself, putting myself around the right people. You know, I know you guys hear this on probably every 
you know, podcast, but that's because it's true. You know, constantly learn, put yourself around good mentors and good people, work your butt off and, you know, good things will happen eventually. As long as you just keep showing up and, and doing your best. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, uh, if Nick is saying it and he's in the position he is right now, it's because, because he did some, some things right, or he did a lot of things right. And now he, you, you guys are going to be able to uh, follow those steps. And like, like he also said, you got to be able to take a marketing that resonates with you. Not necessarily, I'm, we're telling you, go and do online marketing, online uh, lead generation, but it worked for Nick and what he wanted to do. Uh, it works. Online marketing works. Um, it's, it's also uh, easier in the, uh, in, the, in the getting to the seller, getting with the seller side. Uh, but you at the same time, you got to put the effort and, and the work and, and be able to follow up and have a human follow up, uh, like consistently. So, um, like Nick is a great example of using YouTube, using you Google, using SEO, having a good website, um, ranking pretty high and doing Facebook. And now he's going to take things to the next level. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's what I wanted to cover, uh, your success, uh, really, really, uh, shines upon what we're trying to do here in this group, in this uh, community, which is called the uh, real estate investing, uh, marketing and conversion mastery. So, uh, if you don't know, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna come up. It's gonna be a, uh, kind of mentorship slash program where we're gonna teach you guys, uh, about SEO about Google AdWords, Facebook ads, specifically for REI and how you can literally dominate and, and either teach that to your team or do it yourself. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to set you up with this type of things. Um, then further on YouTube, you guys are, you are doing, Nick is you doing YouTube right now, and, but we're going to be able to dominate it to take it to another level. So uh, yes, guys, it's, it's awesome to have Nick. Uh, both Esteban Nick and Nick Perry are here with you guys. Um, can you tune with the real estate marketing and conversion podcast? So hope you guys uh, actually got some value out of it and, um, and everything. Nick, is there anything that you want to say to people that really want to take it to the next level with online marketing? You know, you're going to have to uh, just get in there and, and risk a lot of marketing dollars. So, yeah, don't be scared. Um, scare money doesn't make any money. So, you know, don't be shy when you get into online marketing, you know, jump with both feet in, you know, load it up on a credit card. Don't be, you know, don't be shy and, and go spend some money. I mean, yeah. And Hey, and there's a lot of credit cards that have really good points for, uh, online advertising. So, you know, free trips, exactly. free things. Right. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I've got airfare and trips covered for, for a long time because yeah, of, man. of this business. So, um, yeah, then that's pretty much it. And just, you know, I'll always be learning, you know, don't ever think you know it all, especially with Google, you know, or Facebook, they're constantly changing. So, you know, be, become an expert in it and, you know, uh, always stay on top of what's, what's coming out with them. They're always changing. So that's about it. Yeah, man. Hey, Nick, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome having you, uh, I'm going to, you know, stay in touch with you, man. It's awesome to have you like such a great person to talk to you and, you know, the value that you, you're an open book. You're basically an open book. And, uh, that's sweet. Uh, if, I guess if people want to follow Nick in, uh, social media, what, what, what would be your social media, man? Uh, Instagram, you can follow me at Nick Perry, REI. So Nick Perry, REI. Um, I'm pretty responsive on there. So that, you know, if anybody needs anything, you know, just reach out. Happy to help. Awesome. And uh, you can also, you know, he has a, a, a Facebook and you don't have a YouTube yet, right? No, nah, man, I don't do any of that. But you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Awesome. Um, yep. So that's about it. Awesome. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed that this new episode of Real Estate Investing and uh, Marketing and Conversion. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have some sweet things for you guys. If you guys want to get some samples of ads uh, and uh, targeting for both Facebook and, and Google, I'm going to drop in the link below. So 
you guys are able to use this and start spending some money testing it out. You guys are going to be able to do fine. All right, Nick. Thanks, man. Have a great one, man. All right. All right. Let's do this.